what a interesting film and, and what an interesting time for like animations and and I'm not sure in all the, the technicalities of what was going on here. It looked a little bit like uh like animation and claymation or stop motion. Can you talk a little bit about the look of uh your Pixar uh short entitled Self? Yeah, um so Self is a stop motion hybrid film. Um and we actually built a puppet to kind of represent her versus everyone around her is CG. Uh, which is the first thing that first time that Pixar has ever done that. It was honestly like a beautiful roller coaster is kind of like how we phrase it. It's like we're flying the plane, but building it. Um, but it was really important for me to kind of add the stop motion aspect to it because it was such a specific and unique part of the story of how she doesn't belong. Um, and, you know, as you can tell in the film, like, there's so many things and layers to it, but I think the biggest one just visually is that like she's animated differently like everyone else. So she's on twos and threes versus the uh, other characters around her on ones. Now, I know that, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm in school right now studying AI. I know AI has been having an effect on the industry and the writing's room and, and, and VO and, uh, and so many facets. But I and I've talked to a lot of people about it, but not I haven't been able to talk to animators. And I know that uh image generation with Dolly and, and generative AI has has grown tremendously. How is that affecting, you know, teams like Pixar? Is it a tool that you guys are using? Is it something that um you feel is gonna have an effect on the amount of people that get to work on these films? Or like what's what's your thought on that and, and what's been your process with AI and animation? Yeah, so straight off, like I personally haven't worked with any AI or any AI tools for self. Um, but I do know that like uh, AI, like we do see it as a tool. Um, it is something that like, oh, what a great tool, but it doesn't replace artists. We're very big of like artists makes our stories. Like we even have an in-house animation team, which is like very rare for animation studios. Everything's always outsourced and with vendors and like, you know, parts of the world but we do everything in-house so for us it's just like ai is not going to replace anything um there is like you know looking into like how we can use it as a tool to help things you know feel more efficient or to help the artists to make their art but not to replace them i know movies that are the feature length take you know years and years to make like i'm not sure how long frozen uh two was but i know it was like you know several years but when you have six minutes that you're working with and I, I know just from editing stuff being shorter doesn't actually mean you know like make stuff shorter doesn't always mean that it's like a lot less time but how, how long did you work on uh the project itself like how long did it take you from concept to completion yeah I would say it's a, it was like a little under two years like a year and a half it's like the process of how we made it. We did have some stops and goes because of production needs, but I think the biggest thing about stop motion is that everything is pre-production. So 90% of the work of the film is in pre-production and then 10% is just executing and you just go. So for us, it was like a lot of time just like building the puppet and like these puppets take, our puppet took like around four to five months to just be made. Um, and that wasn't like, oh, here you go and see you in four months. It was like a very collaborative back and forth process of like, first they built the armature and us looking at the armature and approving, like, is this the, all the motions and things we need from her? Okay, cool. After the armature is then building the actual body parts. Um, and after building the, building the body parts is also just like, okay, like her texture, like she's made out of wood. So it was really important for me and for the story that like she looks like a wooden doll um or else it will break the story and you could easily make her look plastic which is something that we were really trying to avoid so it's just like okay what kind of paint material can we use to help that like how we how can we mat her down but not make her feel dull but not have her shine like the other characters around her um so with stop motion and i have to say too animation yeah animation is just like a longer process because we're building everything from scratch we're not like going to a set with like a house that's already built um, or even like a sound stage is literally just like we're building worlds and making them from scratch and that's the same for herself we're like we're literally building her from the ground up and that's the unique part of this short film out of all of them was just that we never had like 
a physical puppet, like something physical from our short films before, even like the process of like how to bring her back to Pixar was fun because like our executives were like, oh, we'll just put her in a wooden box. And we're like, no, do you understand how long it took for us to make her? She's like a masterpiece. I'm like, okay, we have to create like a very specific, you know, handmade kind of like, just like box to put her in to have a 15 minute drive to Pixar from the set. So yeah. like, yeah, it's a very, like, I think that's the thing about animation where it's just like, it is kind of like a long meditative process of making it, but the results are like worth it. So that was going to be one of my questions. Like, does this puppet, is this puppet somewhere in your house or is this, does it, is it, I mean, the puppet is there? It's funny because right now we're talking about like what's the tech out system for her, which like makes me laugh because I feel like I'm in like custody with this because like when can I see her? Um, right now she's like sleeping in archives, but the plan is that once we start like going out and like doing talks and stuff, she's going to come with us. Um, but because she's fragile and she is like, you know, expensive. Um, yeah. um, and she also is insured, which is great. But I think for me, it's more just like, yeah, like I want to make sure she is safe. Um, so she could come out, be outside, be around people. I don't, I'm one of those people who are just like, I don't think like art should just be hidden away in a storage box where no one can see them. Like I went to Luna Luna. I don't know if you know about that. It's the LA amusement park. Um, and it's in LA right now. And these beautiful art pieces for this amusement park. It is all these artists from like the 70s who came together to make it. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe it for like the past three decades. It was just like in container tubes and tech, like container boxes in Texas. And now it's out to sea. So I'm very much in the theme of like, she's going to come out. Right now she's sleeping. She's taking a little nap, but she's going to be out in the world soon. Tell us a little about your early career in education. I know uh, you was at UCLA Theater and Film, am I correct? Mm -hmm. um like was was the goal always to to be an animator and to to get at you know Pixar with this great team where they've had Frank Abbey and Pete Doctor and all these great animators that you know come out of uh you know uh Pixar like was that always the goal like could you tell us going from UCLA to here like a little bit, a bit about that yeah, I think like for me, it was never the goal because to be truthfully honest, like I never even thought it was possible. Um, like I come from like an immigrant family background, like single mom, like living in Section 8 housing in LA. So like the thought of me going to work at Pixar was just, it wasn't something that I could even like dream about, um, but I'm very hardworking. So I think that was like the and naive when I was young and I was like, oh, I'm just going to go to film school and like just figure it out. And I was just like, I can't believe I did that because now that like I'm an adult and I like look back at that. I'm like, I was so naive and not knowing what I was setting myself up for. But I just loved filmmaking. I love this, you know, as a way to be a storyteller, because I think for me before you know, getting to animation and get to film school, I, I like had this longing of like, oh, I think I want to tell stories. Um, but I was also one of those people who are like, I don't want to know how to draw. Um, that was not my wanting, like when you talk to people in animation, they're like, oh, I've been drawing sketchbooks since I was like five. And I was like, I was not that girly. I do not draw. I, I was doing animation in the sense of like animating like puppets or like clays with the stop motion medium um but I really kind of honestly just want to tell stories and I wanted to play with different kinds of mediums to tell that story and there was something about animation about how you know anyone and everyone can understand it there's no like gatekeeping in this genre which I really like so I lean and cling towards that but at UCLA I was also like a screenwriting major so I was really mostly just like you know, paper and pen, just writing stories. And I think that really helped me kind of like, you know, one, fulfill that storytelling need, but also two, also kind of motivate me to go towards animation um, because animation is so expensive and a like kind of like a small group and community. Like for me, I always had to have like a reason or why to lean into that kind of community. And stop motion was kind of like the reason for me. And, and lastly, like, I mean, how personal was this story to you. I mean, I feel like uh, your, your lead character is she deals with a lot with what a lot of people deal with, with cold switching, but she's trying to fit in or whatever, it, whatever it is. Um, but ultimately felt, you know, more value in being herself. Like how much of that was your journey? You, you said you're a child of immigrant, I'm a child of immigrant. Um, like how how did how did you reflect into that character? 
Yeah, I think it's like a two-parter. I think it's like a part of my story of just like, I'm Ethiopian American. So like I have like two identities of like, uh, not me not feeling Ethiopian enough and me trying to figure out how to fit in an Ethiopian community, mainly because I don't speak the language. And I also was born and raised in America. Uh, but also just like me being a black woman in America and how much of like a whirlwind that is for me. Um, and I do think that like, it's funny because like for me self, it's been sh it's short for self-sabotage and I'm someone who constantly like self-sabotage myself when I want something really, really badly. I think I just have a very backwards and slightly toxic way of like wanting to get specific goals in my life. And uh, for me, it was just like, I want to tell a story about someone who self-sabotages themselves, but I also wanted them to also kind of like uh, suffer the consequences of their actions. Cause that's something that like, I also still deal with right now where like there's still consequences from my past that I'm still dealing with today um and all these things are like personal to me but like was you know what's was, was beautiful about the filmmaking process and making a film is just like you know once you make it like it's not my film anymore it's the audience and they could kind of take it in their own interpretation like some of my friends said like oh I thought this film was about self-love or self-identity or self-discovery and I'm like that's great I love that you're able to kind of take some of these universal moments um, because a lot of these moments that self goes through in the film are microaggressions or th these that you just don't see as often is very like hard to tell when these things happen. Um, but the second part too, is just like, I also want to talk about my mom's story of immigrating to America and how she was kind of conformed to like fit in too. And like, you could tell in the film, like language is somewhat of like a prominent kind of like through line of that too, where like my mom was like really conformed to speak English. So yeah, as yeah. yours too. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure um, the Habitat community is going to be like super proud to have an uh, animator that's been doing something. You didn't just start at Pixar. You worked on Incredibles 2 and Turn It Red. And, uh, I, and you know, I am I feel a kinship to to your, your success. So keep keep doing it just so, you know, I could say that I knew you when. <laughs> I talked to you when, <laughs> you know, when. And you know, later on, you know, uh, I'm sure you you're gonna have uh, many other projects that are that are just as great or greater than, than this. So thank you for your time, and uh, I'm I'm for you, and uh, good luck. Thank you.